Music, Excel, Worksheet, Scales, Intervals, Modes, and more. Constructing the mode table and relative positions as compared to the major scale or Ionian mode part of the table. We are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build the entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you can start from this point if you so choose, possibly looking at this more from a music theory standpoint, constructing the tables as we build them either in Excel or even jotting them down with pen and paper because that's just a useful exercise as we go through this time looking at the relative positions of the different modes using the major scale, otherwise known as the Ionian mode, as our key, as our point of reference, and then using that table to then construct a table of the relationships of the modes. That's what we're going to do this time. If you do have access to this workbook, multiple tabs down below, the general idea is that the example tab is the end product, the aim, the goal that we are shooting for. The number tabs will correspond to the numbers of the presentations where we have worked on that part of the table. Let's go back to the example tab to get an idea of what we have done and where we are going at this point. So we started out simply mapping out the musical alphabet. We did so using A and then the small a b to represent a sharp or a flat. That's going to be our coding language or how we're going to reference the uh, musical alphabet going out to G sharp. We then numbered it, the numbering being useful just for coding purposes within Excel, but also something that is quite useful to memorize. So we're advocating being able to code switch between these numbers, which are absolute numbers and the, the lettering numbers. And note that if like numbering something is useful for Excel for coding purposes, there's a reason for that, right? So, so that, that gives us an idea that that might be useful for us to do in our brains as well because it gives us another hook to tie things together with and we can see that clearly with Excel. So I, I, I'm just trying to say that I really think it's useful to learn the absolute numbers. So I'm gonna put them together, notes and numbers. We then constructed our table of the modes, just listing out the modes, numbering them one through seven, modes corresponding to the uh, scales that we're gonna be building. And the scales typically are gonna be constructed off of what we think of as the major scale, and, and that's gonna be the Ionian mode. So remember that they're all related. It's kind of like physics where everything is relative. It depends where you're standing in terms of what the modes are looking like or what mode you are in. That's a good way to think of it, I believe. However, we need a focal point just like you do in physics to say this is the point that I'm going to be measuring from and comparing everything else to. If you don't have that and everything is relative, everything is too confusing because you don't know where you're standing. So we're standing on the major scale. That's gonna be the scale that we compare everything else to. I'm gonna number then all the other modes of which there are going, there's gonna be seven modes based on the major scale. So when I say, so when we say the modes are gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, I'm gonna use the absolute numbering system just like we did over here. This is an absolute numbering system for the notes in the scale. This is an absolute numbering system for the different modes. So if I say it's gonna be the mode number three, Phrygian. I can also give a little bit more information with the Roman numerals, which will tell us if it's a major mode or minor mode. Major modes are gonna have a major triad in it. The minor modes having a minor triad the, ma the big thing that differentiates is just the third of the scale, is the third major or minor. That will tell you if it's gonna be a major mode or minor mode, except for the Locrian, which also has that flat fifth thing going on. This table will help us to code some of the stuff that we're gonna go forward with as well. We then put together the intervals. Remember that there's only 12, there's only uh, 12 notes 
in the alphabet. So then if I look at every interval as though it's a ruler with 12 inches on it, inches being equivalent to our baseline or smallest unit that we're working with on here, which is our half step, we can, we can name each length, right? One length, I can call it a minor, uh, a minor second, two half steps, I can call it a major second, three half steps, I can call it uh, a minor third, four half steps, I'm gonna call it a major third, and that's gonna give us information about the relative position in the scale, as well as uh, the distance. And I'm gonna add to that then th the actual distance in half steps, which is something you don't often see, but I think is something quite relevant and useful. We then took a look at the musical formula, and the formula is taking these notes, which there are 12, and it's telling us how we can pick seven of them in order to make our scale seven out of 12 notes. How did we arrive at the formula? We here are accepting it a priori. We're just gonna say that's what, the mu that's what the music masters of the past have come up with. And so we accept their formula and that is what it is. This formula is what creates not only the Ionian, but all of the other scales. And the one we're most familiar with is usually gonna be called whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And then we go, then we, I repeated it again. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Now, we, we looked over here, noting that if you imagine this formula going out to infinity, then the pattern just repeats over and over again. So it goes Ionian to Locrian, and then back to I Ionian to Locrian, if you were kind of, if you were gonna look at it that way. And that means that if I was to take that pattern, if I just looked at this pattern that just repeats on f forever, and I just happen to look at it, but start at this point at the Dorian, then I'm gonna start at the two, and then look at the pattern and say, well, no, the pattern isn't half, half, whole, half, half, half. It's, it's gonna be, it's actually whole, half, whole, 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 half, whole to get back to the Dorian. And if I happen to look at this pattern and I just, my, my point of reference happened to be just like our point of reference in physics is on Earth, even though it's not a special place in terms of relativity, in terms of measuring things, right? I just happen to be on this one, the Phrygian. Then I'm going to say, well, no, the pattern's not that. It's going to be half, uh, whole, 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 half, whole, uh, whole, uh, <laughs> whole, right? And you get the idea. So. That means that I can start if it there's seven if there's seven notes in our scale, then then what's going to happen then is we're going to have seven different patterns depending on the starting point, because it's just going to go and then it's going to repeat. All right, so that's that's actually once you get that concept in your mind, it's like okay, that's pretty big. That kind of makes sense. I get that, but it actually has a lot of implications in terms of how we're going to be thinking about the different modes and how different ways that you can actually visualize the modes as you're going through the fretboard and trying to apply this in practice. So, so what we're gonna do now is create a table and I'm gonna try to compare everything to the relative positions. So if I was to take this, this formula here and then, and then get my notes from it, note one, ones through seven, I can then name another numbering system of my notes in the major scale. I'm gonna call them position one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then, and then I can look at the different modes and think about what the relative positions would be in the different modes as they are compared to the Ionian or major mode. And so that's what we're gonna do this time. So that might sound a little wonky right now. I think it'll make sense as we go. Once we have this, I can also think of this in terms of the, the actual modes. So I'm gonna make a modal table and we'll put the relative positions of the different modes within the modal table. And again, I think this will make more sense once we start to build this out. This table then will be used to help us construct our worksheet over here, which is gonna be our most useful worksheet.
So I think it's good to put together kind of in theory, but it will also help us to number our worksheet over here, which is gonna give us the scale that we want to work in. And it's also gonna give us our numbering system in terms of the modes, as well as tell us whether or not in the scale we are in, if it's gonna be a major chord, and you can also think of it as a major mode or minor mode. So in other words, when we look at this worksheet, usually people say, this is the scale I'm in, and this is the notes that are in it. If it's in the key of C, I've got seven notes in it. And then they say, I want to know the chords that I can play with in that scale. And it's usually major and minor, so they usually, you kind of see it, they might write it as an uppercase Roman numeral, lowercase Roman numeral for the second, lowercase Roman numeral for the third, meaning minor, minor, uppercase, major, uppercase, major, minor, and then diminished with the dot here is going to be the diminished, which, which is kind of the one that's a little bit out because of the flat fifth. But we can add more information than that and say, look, if I, it's not just that this is a door is a minor, the one, three, five, it's that if we constructed the entire scale, it would be the Dorian scale. And so thinking about it that way, I think is useful to do because then you're going to naturally, when you use this worksheet to play, realize not just that you can play the minor here, but that that is actually the Dorian mode. And that'll trigger in your mind after you repeat that in your mind that the Dorian is at least a minor mode. And then you can kind of see the differences between different chords constructed from position two related to the major scale versus position you know, six and whatnot. So that's what we'll, we'll dive into here. All right, so, so, so it seems kind of wonky, but it is gonna be helping us build that table over there. And I think it does have practical ramifications as well as what I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna type, this is gonna be relative major po positions per mode. That's gonna be, am I spelling mode right? I think that's how you spell mode. Anyway, I think that's right. I'm gonna make this a header format, home tab, font group. We're gonna go make it black and white as has been our custom for the headers. And then I'm gonna number over here just a numbering system of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we could of course do that easier in Excel. I could just say one, two, select those two just to practice our Excel skills, put our cursor on the fill handle and drag it down. And it gives us that nice numbering as we go. All right, and then I'm gonna make that black and white. So I'm gonna go to the do, do, do font group, black and white. So when we think about our scales, you'll note that this formula we looked at up top will give us seven of 12 notes. We're gonna pick whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, and get seven of 12 notes. Uh, and that's gonna be, that'll be our seven notes. So down here, then when we're looking at our scales, then we're thinking of the relative positions and I have a new numbering system, which is gonna be one through seven. Now that numbering system is gonna be relative to the mode that we're in, right? So now we're not talking about um, this numbering system is not telling me the absolute notes, because remember we said that one is an A, right? I have to change my system. We might call this the first as opposed to note number one, right? And that's gonna be the first position, the second position, the third position. And to get it in your mind, I start calling them relative positions because again, these, these are all relative to what point that we're looking at, what scale we're in, and what, what the mode is that we're doing in that scale. I'm gonna actually pull it down because I need more headers. I'm gonna pull this down, which I could do this way, or I could, I could put my cursor on the top one, right click, and say I want to insert, and then I'm gonna insert and pull these down like that. All right, and then I'm gonna put the modes on the top one. So I'm gonna to try to just say this equals and then pick up the, the modes we already did up here. So I'll pick up the modes up here. I'll put my cursor on that fill handle. I could copy it across and it'll pick up the relative references and we wanna go out to Locrian. So there's our, our modes going out to Locrian. Selecting those, I'm gonna select 
these two and make them a header format. Go into home tab, font group, black and white. Okay, so then if I if I look at if I'm so this is going to be my number. All of the different modes all have seven notes in it. What's going to happen is there's going to be a change in terms of which one we're starting at. So we're going to compare everything to the low to the Ionian, which is the major scale. So on the major scale, it's just going to be the same. This equals one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven. That's going to be our major scale. Now I'm going to compare all of the other modes to the relative positions in the major scale. So in other words, the Dorian is just going to be the same relative positions, but instead of starting at the one, we're starting at the two. So what this table is saying then is that if I'm in the Dorian mode, then, then the one position in the Dorian mode is equivalent to the second position of the major scale or Ionian mode. So I'm comparing all the mode positions here, this being position one in Dorian, to its equivalent position in the major scale or Ionian mode. The Phrygian, just all the Phrygian is doing is all the same relative posi positions and notes will be in the related Phrygian. It's just that the one of the Phrygian is going to be equivalent to the three of the major or Ionian. And then, of course, the Lydian, the one of the Lydian is going to be equivalent to the four of the Ionian or major scale. The one of the Mixolydian will be equivalent to the five of the major scale. The one of the Aeolian is going to be equivalent to the sixth of the major scale. The one of the Locrian is going to be equal to the seventh of the major scale. Now, notice when you do this, you might start saying, well, why do I even do this? Why do I need to rotate? Why don't I always look from the position of the major scale and just say that I'm just going to be playing around the third or something like that? And you could do that, but sometimes it's easier to, to, to switch your mindset to say you're playing in Dorian and make that the central point because it's easier to kind of think of it as the one note in the Dorian and if you communicate to other people then then you have to figure out how they're thinking you know so they might think like that you might just say hey look if they don't think in terms of modes you could say I'm, I'm playing instead of saying I'm playing in the Dorian I'm gonna say I'm playing in this Ionian scale the related major scale but I'm making the two note the key the tonic right you could you could phrase it like that which means we're basically focused on that note and you're focused then on the mate the the minor the minor related to it because the two note is a minor uh a minor chord right so so you could think of it either of those ways but some people are going to be thinking in modes and so you have to be be able to code switch back and forth between those two so what i want to do now is just it's just going to be if that's the two i can copy this down and say okay well then that's going to be the three that's going to be the four that's going to be the five so in other words the two the two of the dorian is going to be equivalent to the three of the major and that means the three of the dorian is going to be equivalent to the four of the major and it's just staggered right now the problem is if I copy this formula down, it's not going to copy all the way down. I get the zero because I didn't repeat the table. So I want to say, okay, how can I how can I do like a cool formula here so that it can so that it'll pick that up? So one one idea is I could say, well, let's just take this plus one, right? And that's all that we're doing here. So I could do that, but there's a problem because if I copy that down, I get to eight, and I don't want to go to eight. I want it to go to seven and then repeat. So I have to do like a logic formula to, so it looks kind of fancy just to, just to count up and then repeat basically at eight, which is gonna look like this. Equals if brackets, this is an if logic function. If this is true, do this. If this is not true, do something else. So we're gonna say, I'm gonna put another brackets and I'm gonna say if this number, which is a two plus one, I'm closing up the brackets, the one brackets, I still have the other brackets open. If that 
is less than eight, right? It has to be less than eight, then comma, that's what the comma means. What do we want it to do if that is true? If it's true, then, and you could copy this, like sometimes it's easy to copy this, then take that plus one, right? And then if it's not true, what if it's not true? What if it's greater than eight? Then what do you want me to do? So th th what's the value? Well, then you're gonna say that plus one, I pasted it again, minus, uh, minus seven, minus seven. And that will take me back to one, right? So I'm gonna say, okay, let's see if that works. So what I expect to happen is this is gonna go up and, and then it repeats after seven. So boom, so there it is, seven, and then it goes back to one. So that's doing what we want it to do and we have a nice formula that we can, that we can use now, which is nice. So what does this mean? That of course means in Dorian, the one of the Dorian is equivalent to the two of the major. The two of the Dorian is equivalent to the three of the major. The, the, uh, the three of the Dorian is equivalent to the four of the major. The four of the Dorian is equivalent to the five of the major, and so on. Let's see if I can copy this formula this way, which I can. So there's the four, right? So if it's a Phrygian, we're going to say the one of the Phrygian is equivalent to the three of the major. The two of the Phrygian is equivalent to the four to the four of the major. Copying that down. Can I copy it down? Boom. So it goes five, six, seven, and then back to one because we got that cool formula. So that means that the six of the, the 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 four of the Phrygian is equivalent to the six. The five of the Phrygian is equivalent to the seven of the major, and then the six of the Phrygian is equivalent to the one, back to the one of the major or Ionian. Being able to recognize where the one is, is useful because if someone says that they are in the Dorian, then I could say, okay, well, what's, what's the seventh of the Dorian that I am in? And that's equivalent to, that's the relative major mode. If I'm in the Phrygian, and they're saying like we're in the Phrygian and blah, 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 then you could say, okay, what's the relative sixth of that? And you can combine this, like you can count up the scale and you can also use your, we can also use our intervals to say the sixth related to the first. We'll talk maybe more about that later, but if I can find that, then I could say, oh, I see that's related to the, the Ionian or major scale that I can find the related scale and major, right? So then I could do the same thing over here. Let's copy that one. We're gonna say, okay, the, so that means we can copy this down. And so now we just have, okay, the one of the Lydian is equivalent to the four of the major. The two of the Lydian is equivalent to the five of the major. The three of the Lydian is equivalent to the sixth of the major. The seven of the Lydian, uh, I'm sorry, the fourth of the Lydian is equivalent to the seventh of the major. And then here's the key one. The fifth of the Lydian is equivalent to the first of the major. So if someone says we're in such, such and such key Lydian, I can say, okay, what's the fifth of the Lydian scale? And that will give me the relative Ionian, which is the major scale, which has all the same notes in it, which might be useful. And so then I can copy this one over again. Let's copy it here, copy this down. So we're gonna do the same for the Mixolydian. So now we're saying the one of the Mixolydian is equivalent to the five, I'm, is, yeah, equivalent to the five of the major. The two of the Mixolydian is equivalent to the six. The three of the Mixolydian is equivalent to the seven. And then here's the one. So that means the four of the Mixolydian is equivalent to the one of the relative major. So if someone says we're in Mixolydian and this is the key that we're in, well, what's the relative fourth in the Mixolydian that will be equivalent to the Ionian? And so then let's, uh, and then let's do this one. Let's copy this one across and then copy it down. So now I'm gonna say, okay, so the one of the Aeolian, which is the minor scale now, is equivalent to the sixth of the relative major, the two, of the the a i'm sorry the aeolian is equivalent to the seventh and then the three 
of the aeolian or minor or minor is equivalent to the one so if someone is in a minor scale which is quite common we could just say well what's the what's the third uh of the minor scale and that will give us the relative major and then so we're gonna all right let's do the next one and i'll copy this one off the locrian and we'll copy this one down. So the one of the Locrian is the seventh of the major, and then the two of the Locrian is equivalent to the one of the major or Iolian. Now, it's not gonna be too likely that you're gonna hear people saying, we're playing in Locrian today, but again, it's useful to see you know those relationships. All right, let's put some brackets around this. Font group, and then brackets. Okay, so once I have that, then I'm going to copy this same table down and I can, I can then look at the relative modes in each position. So hopefully this will make sense once we build it. I'll show you this as we go. I'm going to copy this whole thing, paste it down here, and then I'm going to delete the meat of it. I'm going to delete this stuff because we're going to do something different here. And I'm going to put a new header in it. And I'm going to call this, what am I going to call it? I'll just copy it over here. I have it in a different worksheet. So it's a relative major position in mode format so and then i'm going to put the same headers this equals i'm just going to say equals this cell up here so i can use the formulas so they're linked together put my cursor on the fill handle drag that across okay i'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we can see these at the same time how big can i go so we can see them all right so so now we're going to say now i'm going to say that that this number one, I can also represent that number one as the uh, Ionian scale, right? Because of it's, it's going to be equivalent to the Ionian scale. So in other words, if I look at this worksheet over here, we're going to say this worksheet's going to give me the positions one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Also, it, I want to see if it's a major or minor chord that I construct with it, which often is done with the upper and lower case Roman numerals, but I can also give the added information of saying, hey, look, this Dorian doesn't just give me a minor uh, chord, it gives me a whole minor scale if I was to map out the whole, all of the notes from that position. So that's what we're doing here. We're pulling that, from, we're making that worksheet here. We're going to do that with an X lookup formula, taking all of these numbers in our table and using a table that we constructed before that we will take a look at shortly to convert those numbers to the related modes, noting and remembering that these numbers within the meat of this table up top are referring or showing the relative positions as they are compared to the major scale or the Ionian mode. So in other words, we have our table over here. We're gonna say we constructed this table prior or prior in a prior presentation. If you don't have it, you can build it out if you so choose, which is just taking the modes, labeling them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This numbering system and structure, meaning we're looking at them in relation to the Ionian or major scale. And then we wanna return the value of the Ionian being the number one mode, the Dorian being the number two mode, the Phrygian being the number three mode, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to go down here and just say, okay, I want to convert that number one to the Ionian using that table. How are we going to do that? We can go down here. I'm going to say this is going to be equal to, here's our fancy formula, X lookup tab. And so now here's, we're in the meat of the formula down here. It's going to give us our, our helper notes. So I want to say, what's the lookup value? I want to take this number that is in the heart of our worksheet up top in the relative cell and then say comma. Where do you want to look it up? What's the array or column of numbers? Typically column. We're going to go over here and say, we want you to, to pick up this array of numbers. Now I've moved around in the worksheet. Notice you can still see the formula up top. So this is the reference. Here's the column of numbers, which is going to be E2 through E8. I don't want that column of numbers to move when I copy this around. So I'm going to select F4 on the keyboard. Notice that puts a dollar sign be before the uh, E and the 8. I also want one over here, F4, 
dollar sign before the E and the two. Now, those dollar signs can be confusing because they, they, they lead people to think that there's something with like dollars involved in it. No, it's just a coding mechanism saying, don't move the cells, don't change the reference of those tables, either the starting point or the ending point of them. So then I'm gonna say comma to go to the next argument and we'll do this this way. We're gonna go back up top and say, now I want to return this. So that so find the, the number, which would be one here, and then give me the value in this array. I'm gonna select that array, which you can see up top. I'm gonna to select F4 right away this time, F4, and you can see then it puts the dollar signs in place in both of the beginning and end part of the table at one time. I can close it up now and say enter, and there it is, it gives me the Ionian. So that makes sense. Now, if I copy this down, it should be good because I've made absolute references. So I'm gonna copy that down. And so the next one is the Dorian. Does that make sense? So it's pulling in the two here and we're going to our table and it's saying, give me the two, there's the two and then return that Dorian. That makes sense. Now it's taking <laughs> the three here and saying here's the three returning the Phrygian. And then here's the Lydian, it's taking the four and returning the Lydian. So that looks like it's doing what we would expect. I think I should be able to copy it this way as well. Selecting all those, putting my cursor on the fill handle, dragging it this way. And let's put our cursor up on O and go to U and then double click in between any of those to make it as, as small as it can while still holding all of the information within it. So there we have it. So this, this one is taking this number two and doing the same thing here saying, here's the number two and it's returning a Dorian. So I think it is doing what we would expect. Now this table looks a little bit intimidating, but remember it's the same concept that we did up here. We're just saying, okay, instead of calling the Ionian is gonna be relative position one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if I was to construct if I was to, con to construct the chords from it, we end up with a major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. That's often represented with the uppercase and lowercase Roman numerals. But I can also go further than that and say that if I was to construct like a chord that had all of the notes in it, right, what would I be constructing then if I, I would be constructing basically Ionian and then a chord like a Dorian, right, which would have all the notes in the alphabet, right, and then and then a Phrygian and then a Lydian and then a Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian. If I started on the Dorian, then then I would start with the one, the one being equivalent to the to the majors two. If I was to construct a a chord when I'm starting on the Dorian, it's a minor mode. So the one chord would be a minor chord, but I can also just say, well, it's a minor mode. So, and notice here, I'm, I'm calling it a Roman numeral number two here, which might be a little bit different than some people refer because they might, because I'm, I'm showing it as one in the Dorian position here. And then I'm showing a Roman numeral two using that as an absolute position to tell you what the relative position is to the major scale. In other words, this number one is equivalent to the two, which would be the Dorian or second position in the major scale. And then if I was to go to the second position in the Dorian scale, I can see that here it's telling me that I would be creating a minor chord from it, right? And, the, and I can go further than that though, and I can say, well, it's, ba it's basically the whole minor mode of the Phrygian which is equivalent to the third of the relative major scale. If I went, if I took the third of the Dorian, then I can see here that that capital Roman numeral is going to show that that's going to give me the equivalent to the fourth of the relative major, and it's going to give me a major chord, which means the third is a major third instead of a minor third away. But more than that, it's actually related to the whole major mode of Lydian. So if I went beyond a three note chord, 
to a set to have adding the seven and the nine the 11 the 13 or whatever then then it's related to the lydian right not to the not to the ionian or major and then if i was to look at the fourth of the dorian i can see here that that's going to be the same the fourth of the dorian is equivalent to the fifth of the mixolydian with this roman numeral five it's uppercase which tells me that it can make a minor a major scale having a major uh third instead of a minor third but more than that it's actually would create the entire major mode of the mixolydian and then if i go to the fifth of the dorian that's going to give me the the sixth equivalent to the sixth of the of the ionian or major scale and i can see it's lowercase here which means it's going to be a minor chord construction uh for it because this is the minor mode but more than that i know that this is actually the aeolian or minor scale that would be constructed if i went beyond just the three notes of a triad and then so on the the, the sixth would be equivalent in a Dorian. The sixth of a Dorian is equivalent to the seventh because it's the Roman numeral number seven, which is the weird one showing that it's lowercase, meaning it has a minor third as opposed to a major third, but also has that dot, which means that it has that flat fifth. It's useful to see where the, where the Locrian falls into play too, because oftentimes that will give you an indication like where you, where you stand, right? So, so the points when you look at these different modes it's useful to say, okay, if where's the related major or Ionian? So with a Phrygian, the Ionian is the sixth. And sometimes when you hit that, that Locrian, that gives you an indication as well. That's the beginning and the end of the major, the one and the seven. So when you see that, that can give those two things because they're the beginning and the end can help you to kind of put together the relationships between if I'm looking from the perspective of a mode other than the major, how it relates to the major. And the first place that we do this is with the related minor or the Aeolian mode, right? So this is gonna be our second most popular or frequently used mode in Western music. And you'll start to learn that the sixth of, uh, I'm sorry, the sixth of the major is the minor, right? So that means that the third of the minor is the major. And so this is this Aeolian or minor is the first one that we want to kind of compare the relationship between the major and minor because it's the most useful to compare. But oftentimes people stop there and we don't really realize, at least I did, I didn't really realize when I was you know, trying to figure this stuff out uh, that, that the Dorian has different notes in it right i just i just well i could see that the dorian i can make a minor chord from the dorian but the two when i go to the two it's not like i'm have a major a minor scale there an aeolian it's really looking at the dorian <laughs> scale which actually has the equivalent first th three notes that would build a chord a minor triad but if you go out further than that to the other notes related to it, it's it's not gonna be the exact same as the minor or Aeolian. All right, so I know that gets, so, so, so the concept of this looks, I think, fairly basic because it's all going on this idea that we're just looking from a different perspective using this formula. But you can see here that when we start to compare the modes, it gets somewhat wonky, which isn't helped by the fact that we have these kind of, I think, Greek names which which are which are kind of difficult to memorize but might as well kind of do that and it's kind of wonky in that we can think of ourselves from different perspectives and we want to ground ourselves typically to thinking from the angle of the ionian which is why i'm going to number the modes with absolute numbers one to seven from the perspective of the ionian allowing me to basically look at all the other modes and and number them in a similar way as we did with the musical alphabet itself. All right, so next time we'll take this information and we'll continue on with some more tables down here. And this is gonna give us our intervals table and we'll use that to construct our differences in the intervals between the different modes 
which again, this is probably the most useful thing that we can kind of look at beyond, beyond this from just a practical sense because we can, comp we can look at the different modes and construct them by interval measuring the lengths. So we'll talk about that next time.